Settle down, class. Today's lesson is intellectual property. Kinda. Digging away the moments that make up a dull day. copyright law, there is a doctrine frequently applied as sort of a judicial template called fair use. In short, we have to determine how transformative a work is and how much of the original work comprises the end product. Uh, law lays out a strict line outside which uh, copyright infringement is happening, but the line is kind of a smooth gradient into clearly not copyright infringement territory. As such, the lines of transformative enough are included in that gradient until hammered into place by corporate rules and uh, precedential law rather than uh, logical conclusions based on the law itself. It's a philosophical paradox rather than a legal puzzle, you know? To wit, this is Sonic the Hedgehog. He is owned by Sega as intellectual property. This is Sonic in a costume. It's an official image. Is this still Sonic? This is a Sonic in a shirt. It's fan generated, but is it still a Sonic? Could Sega claim this image to be of their character, Sonic the Hedgehog? This is Sonic in a costume with some extra hair up front. Could this be considered a recognizable image of Sonic? This is a Sonic with black eyes and red irises. Is this a Sonic? How about with wings? How about without shoe? Oh god, skip! Or a girl. Is she a Sonic? Certainly, she isn't identical, but the image is still recognizably a Sonic. Recolors? Is this still a Sonic? Is this transformative enough to no longer be Sonic? We have a recolor with clothing changes and some hair changes, but I wouldn't be able to tell you that this isn't a Sonic without you being dubious of my claim. Now, with a full costume, color changes, and hair changes, is this still a Sonic? What are the falsifying conditions? This is that same character in official images. He's known as Shadow the Hedgehog, a clearly different character also owned by Sega. But is this also a Sonic? Even though canon says this isn't Sonic, it is an anthropomorphic hedgehog character owned by Sega that resembles many fan art depictions of characters very clearly imitating Sonic. So where is the line? Perhaps you think Shadow still fits the descriptive threshold for is a Sonic. In such a scenario, is this a Sonic? I can barely tell that it's based on Sonic the Hedgehog designs, and without context, I wouldn't assume this character has anything to do with Sonic the Hedgehog. Introduce Sonic Forces, a game in which you can create your own character that is owned in basically all iterations by Sega, and you start to see how these things you would expect to have concrete boundaries seem to have no boundaries at all. That doesn't feel correct. I mean, can you disprove that this is two styles of the same character? Mega Man is Sonic, prove me wrong. I can't, not without referencing canon. And since this is fan art, it's already non-canonical. What we're left with is kind of an artistic ship of Theseus, a pointed lack of binary and a rejection of framework and context, and no clear boundaries. This is the problem we get when it comes to remix and modern IP law, because I don't own any of the images I have used here. They're all in the description. If Sega wanted to, they could take issue with my use of these Sonic images in their entirety, and they could issue a request for me to take this video down and edit it and I'm I I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know how that will, well would go for me in like a court of law. So I can't even really say that the fair use doctrine would protect me here. City of Heroes actually helps provide context to this, since Sonic Forces doesn't seem to actually have any EULI stipulations about ownership, which it turns out might be quite intentional. For definition's sake, IP means intellectual property. This might get a tad 
technical, so I'll put a TLDR at the end in case you need a clarifier. Section 6, subsection A, you acknowledge and further agree that you have no IP right related to any service, content, software, or any combination of the foregoing or parts thereof. That bodes well. Section 6, subsection B, to the extent you may claim any such IP rights, you hereby grant NCSoft a worldwide, non-exclusive, no-charge, royalty-free, sub-licensable, perpetual, and irrevocable license, and full authorization to exercise all rights of any kind or nature associated with such IP rights and all ancillary and subsidiary rights thereto in any languages and media now known or not currently known. TLDL, if you use our tools, we own your OC and everything your OC does forever in like every conceivable way. City of Heroes had a character creator that was much more robust than the Sonic one, but I stumbled into this as a result of a conversation and research. Also, nobody makes fan art of City of Heroes characters. Nobody. So, back to Sonic. Who actually owns the creative works facilitated by tools owned by companies? In this, I am including Naoto Oshima, the person who designed Sonic in the first place. Because he doesn't own Sonic. And he never did. He used Sega's tools to make Sonic, and as such, Sega owns it. I think this is the exact same ownership issue, to be quite honest. I don't think someone else owning creative tools gives them a right to own someone else's art. As such, I think we should reclaim the tools of creation as artists. In reclaiming the creative tools as artists, we would have control over what gets made, and we would get to keep what we make. In that spirit, let's define art. Is this art? How about now? Hungry? Notre Dame is definitely art from the way people talk about it. Is this clock art? It is a machine produced by a person for the purposes of being at art. Perhaps you don't like how that looks. So how about this? That's a pretty clock. We can even see how it's made. And in the video, you will see hands. People are making these clocks, and they don't even get direct credit. Someone else gets most of the money when one of these clocks is sold. Very little of it actually gets back to the artists. I think they should reclaim the tools that they use to make the clocks, as well as the full benefit from selling the clock. Really, the concept is as simple as owning the tools you use to make stuff, as well as the stuff that you make. Now, I'm not saying that you should, as an artist, be asked to buy your own personal workshop, but I can't really justify some entity, fiat or otherwise, owning that workshop to stop people from using it unless they sell their art for $7.50 an hour. And if you agree with me that you should own the Sonic OC that you drew based on characters you made in Sonic Forces, I think you should agree that Sonic should be owned by his creator, and I think you would also agree with me that Thomas Edison did not invent the light bulb. Yup, that's what it was about the entire time. Fuck Edison. Hail Tesla. Oh, come on. Fine. It's about the artists owning the tools and product of their creativity. If you create something, if you modify something, you've made art, regardless of form or function. The artistic ship of Theseus is made up of everything. Man. I really shouldn't have started replacing my script on intellectual property with my script on labor rights. Hard to discern which movie I've made now. Sonic Clocks. What's your clock sona? 
I love seeing feedback, I love seeing comments, but if you are rude, I will delete it. There is no reason to disrupt your classmates. Biblio and Patreon are in the description. I have been Luna, and I love you. Bye! I think it was normal cardioid. Goodness, I hope it was normal cardioid. If you f up, it's fine, people f up. Just try and take steps not to f up next time. Thanks for all the bleep. <laughs> I forgot about bleep. <laughs>